Aloha, y'all. Welcome to the Esports Futurai Ezine Podcast, where we chat it up with your favorite celebrities, influencers, local heroes, and people of all walks of life as we reveal the unexpected connection they have to the gaming industry. I'm your host, Chantelle Boucher. Hello, hello, and welcome to Esports Futurai Easing Podcast. This is your host, Miss Chantelle Boucher, and I have a very special guest with me today, Mr. John Blevins. John Blevins is an executive over at Wisdom, and we are going to learn a lot more about him today. How are you doing, buddy? Um, I'm doing great, Chantelle. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was I was really excited to connect with you again, you know, because as you know, we we've talked before or stalked before is what I'd like to say is usually you well, <laughs> don't say we stalked because uh, okay, I, I, I did. <laughs> okay, well, okay. So what I'm trying to say is I did a little stalking, which I have to it's called uh it, you know uh, it, it's me doing my homework, okay? Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. <laughs> so uh, you know, I wanted to just have some fun with you today and 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 you know, especially during these times, I think being happy and and helping people to stay motivated and hearing people's stories and and talking about gaming and and in mm-hmm. your involvement in the industry, um, it's just awesome. So, you know, one of the first things I'd like to kind of go over is tell us who the heck you are and what do you do in a nutshell. This is a 20 sure. minute show, folks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I'll start back at the beat now. Uh, when I so, was yeah. Born. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like you mentioned, I'm working uh, with Wisdom Gaming Group on the uh, on the sales side, but also on the content side. So I, I come from a world of content and podcasting, mm-hmm. uh, like you all do as well. And uh, I've I've really uh, sort of done my own podcasts for. Oh man, the better part of a decade now, um, and in the gaming and esports uh, space, and have mm-hmm. recently been working uh, with Wisdom on the sales side, doing uh, sales activations and uh, sponsorships, partnerships, all of the above uh, for Wisdom, and and, and putting tell, on some tell awesome people events. what Wisdom is for those who are just kind of hearing about it right now or been living under a rock. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Wisdom is uh, a a media production company. So we're putting on uh, a lot of awesome uh, esports uh, and gaming events, um, all online right now for the obvious reasons of well, COVID. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're if you've heard of uh, brands like Giant Slayer or uh, Heroes Hearth, those are under or or Alpine Esports for mm-hmm. Rocket League. Those are mm-hmm. all under our umbrella, uh, the umbrella of wisdom. Wisdom as a brand is is sort of burgeoning uh, in its mm-hmm. own right. We've done a couple. We did a, a Fall Guys event, and we're doing some other things under the wisdom uh, brand name. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot of different brands in 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 different um, different gaming verticals. Riot. We're working with Riot Games a lot, and Blizzard, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. other uh, other publishers as well. So that's exciting. That's yeah. exciting. And telling. Let's start back at that beginning again, though. What? Tell me about. Tell me about your childhood and your teenage years and your involvement in being interested, even in the gaming industry to begin with, or even with marketing. Yeah. So uh, I, you know, we we talked about this before, but I I grew up with a, a Super Nintendo controller in my hand, and and eventually, uh, you know, PS One, PS Two controller into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Xbox 360 in my uh, my high school years, which I know is either dating me as way younger than people or way older. Um, I'm like in that middle area That's where that, it's that weird <laughs> age in the gaming industry where like you're either too old or too young, and it's right. just <laughs> it's <Mil- funny. laughs> millennials right now are either always the oldest person or always the youngest, but never anything yeah, else. It's true. Um, <laughs> which is, which is uh, I guess, just a, I guess that's just what thirty is. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, so I same. Always, I can totally relate. I'm I'm thirty as well. <laughs> uh, Why are you laughing uh, so much? It's weird. Uh, because I'm I'm also thirty, and it's <laughs> a funny 30, thing when people okay, are the cool. same age. Yep. Uh, mm. uh, that that was my recovery there. Um, <laughs> cool. Thank you. But uh, yeah, more more about me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, let's the, talk about me, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Go for the, it. Uh, so yeah, I I just always loved gaming. Um, grew up 
grew up gaming and, and, and playing games, um, mostly for fun. Um, but I also grew up playing sports. Uh, so I, I played basketball from, I was, I was like in fifth grade all the mm-hmm. way through high school and that was extremely competitive. So I, I got mm-hmm. that sort of competitive drive and loved competition. I mean, even just like going on a walk with my family, we would be like playing competitive tag and like, <laughs> like we were that we were those people where I we're like <laughs> going like we're like sprinting down the street for no reason other than to get home first, right? <laughs> um, so it was it was things like that where I had that uh, competitive drive from playing sports and also loved games. So it you know it made sense um, to sort of get into you know to to turn that sort of competitive uh, mentality into something more uh, with, with gaming and esports. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, how yeah. I naturally got into it. And uh, speaking of siblings, um, for everyone listening to this, he is not, I repeat, not related to Ninja. I, I don't think I am, at least. <laughs> at, least at, at best, we're like second cousins, but I, maybe, don't, I don't think so. You should do Ancestry and figure that out. Because for those no, of you... He should do Ancestry. He do, it's <laughs> right. He gets to be related to you. See how that goes? Because you're older, aren't you? Uh, how old is Ninja? I think we're probably we're close maybe to the same, same age. age. You're twins. You're separated at birth. Yep. That's what happened. <laughs> you know, Because when I was, you know, stalking, researching, whatever you call it, with John, I kept seeing another John Blevins pop up and I'm like, he's not Ninja's brother. The <laughs> the bearded Blevin. That's not yep, him. That's not me. <laughs> that's not I him. I mean, it is me, but that's not what my It is, but is. not. It's just <laughs> funny though. So, um, so being into gaming, you're into the competitive sports. What is that kind of connection? Do you think from traditional sports to the video game industry? Like uh, people think they separate it so much. So, but there are still so many skills and, mm-hmm. and, familiarity in both of them Mm -hmm. what is that for you yeah absolutely i I mean all the way down to you know high school middle school i mean competitive sports in high school for a very very small percentage of people is a Mm -hmm. career path right 0.0001% or whatever it is yeah are are going to go on to be professional athletes even at like lower levels not to mention you know Mm. the 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 highest echelons Mm-hmm. So, you know, schools aren't running competitive sports programs to yield professional athletes. It's to build, you know, uh, sportsmanship and teamwork and problem solving and all these other things that you can get from other, uh, you can get from other uh, paths. I mean, it doesn't have to be competitive mm-hmm. sports. And the thing is, is that it's, it's, it's kind of melded because a lot of people, parents and kids think that oh i'm playing high school basketball therefore i'm on my trajectory to the nba but mm-hmm. really that's not again it, it, only for a very small percentage is that what it is so yeah uh and a lot of programs take their um you know their programs very serious a lot of schools take their programs very seriously so not everyone can play varsity basketball or varsity football mm-hmm. for physical reasons if you, i was just gonna say that you, know, it, 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 you, you have to be built a certain way Right to Physically. play at a high, yeah, yeah, to play at a high level, and also mm-hmm. there's only so many, you yeah. know, it, there's only so many spots. If you're in a school with 1,600 people, I mean, there's only five people on the basketball court, right? So, uh, yes. um, it, it, esports, I think, gives you a lot of the um, not physical related skills and uh, uh, lessons that you're learning playing something like uh, you know basketball or football in high school. You can get a lot of the same value from that um, by being on an esports team or or playing competitive esports. I mean, you can do the same thing playing mm-hmm. competitive chess. I mean, it's the same. Yep. It's all there. It's just the perception from you know the community and families. You know, are you know it's not the same in every mm-hmm. way, but you can get a lot of value from that. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I love what you said too, as well about the physicality part of it. It's what something that's so cool about gaming is that it doesn't necessarily discriminate against uh, your physical traits that you may or may not have, or male, female, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. So that's cool. And so, when was your first like introduction into the business world of gaming and esports? Yeah, it, it all kind of happened sort of organically. Um, I started my uh, podcast, High Noon Podcast, in 2015. 
Um, and it was, I had done podcasts before that, but it was, they were a hundred percent hobbies. Um, I mean, high noon mm-hmm. podcast kind of started as a hundred percent a hobby as well, but, um, just from the, the trajectory, the trajectory that it went on, it, mm-hmm. it, it grew into more than that. And just networking with people yeah. and reaching out to people at blizzard and actually talking and, and getting, you know, we eventually got an interview with the commissioner of the overwatch league, cool. um, which was really awesome. So it, it really sort of just from networking with people and, and also growing professionally outside of esports on like LinkedIn and whatnot. It's like, mm-hmm. well, I, I, there's a lot of esports stuff on LinkedIn. So why don't I use this platform that I have for my, you know, nine to five job mm-hmm. to also network with some people uh, in the esports industry, so it really kind of yeah. happened organically. There wasn't a like, yeah, you know, there wasn't like a light bulb moment for that. Uh, it just kind of yeah, just it transitioned that way. It just kind of happens, right? When something is like so meant to be, that's how you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, it's like you try to force things in life sometimes so much so to make things happen, and uh, that's really great. So, what was that nine to five job, if you don't mind me asking you? That? Yeah, so I worked at a essentially a, a sales agency, business development agency, where we mm-hmm. would work with clients to essentially do the the BD work. Um, yeah. So we'd be making, you know, we were grinding the phones. We were making, you know, 100 calls a day, sending emails, using other uh, sort of email and, and marketing automation platforms to mm-hmm. be that first point of contact for a, uh, you know, a client that isn't, doesn't necessarily have, you know, what we would call SDRs or sales development reps. Um, mm-hmm. We were essentially an outsourced SDR company um, that would do that. So, gotcha, where, gotcha. Yeah. And then you just brought it over to the gaming industry. Yeah, because it, it it's not a uh, it, it being a. I mean, sales and marketing, as 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 many of the listeners I'm sure know, is not a. Uh, it's it, it's not only necessary for one industry. It's necessary for everything. All the industries. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone need. if you're basically everyone needs to be selling something, right. Or uh, yeah. promoting the product, whether it's a direct, uh, um, you it's know, a business. Selling. Yeah. Everything's a business, yeah. right. Or else, yeah. uh, unless it's a passion project. And, but it, you know, when we're talking about making money <laughs> and the amounts of money that, uh, you know, uh, esports is, is demanding these days, you absolutely need a more formalized sales team. Yeah. And, and I think it's really good too, to keep these, this next generation really educated about the opportunities that are in this mm-hmm. industry. Can you kind of speak to that too as well? Because I feel like it needs to be talked about more, to be honest. Absolutely. I, I remember, um, to go on a little bit of an aside, but that's slightly related. No, yeah. please. No, um, yeah. uh, when I was in like a freshman or sophomore, uh, probably a sophomore in college, um, that was when I found out about uh, Twitch and mm-hmm. streaming. Um, and I actually started to stream a little bit uh, way back in the day. I had, you know, uh, only a couple of viewers, but um, it actually grew to a point where it was, it was something that was that I, looking back, if I would have continued with it, I would probably be, a, you know, a, a big, in a bigger spot from my streams perspective. <laughs> right. Um, I, I could have, I think with what I know now, I could have capitalized on it, but I specifically remember talking with folks um, friends at the time who were a bit older than me and, and, and essentially them pushing back and saying, well, what's the, you know, what's the future for this? You know, I'm still in college. I didn't mm-hmm. really, I didn't even have my nine to five job mm-hmm. at this point. I was working at a grocery store. So I don't know about the business world and, and mm-hmm. the esports e- world was very, um, it, it was not what it is today is what I'll yeah. say, you know, five, five, six years ago, you look back, um, And I remember thinking like, well, you know, the streaming thing is cool, but like what happens in five years, right? Uh Um, You know, I'll have a college degree at that point. I'll, you know, what, what will this have been for? If I am, you know, if I'm not making my money off of streaming, where am I going to be? Or, you know, if Mm -hmm. I want to stop streaming, you know, Mm -hmm. I've put all this time and effort into something that didn't, you know, I can't get a, a quote unquote real job from this. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I, I absolutely think that is a, you know, there are real jobs in esports and, and streaming. You really have to treat like running your own business in a lot of ways. And I think, you know, looking back, if I were able to mentor myself, then I think yeah. I could have really helped, um, you know, 
turn that into something and 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 gain you know future value from that. Yeah, absolutely. And where do you feel like kids need to start looking for these resources? Like, obviously, you go to Google and you like type anything in, and yeah. you can almost find anything. But like, where what kind of um, suggestions can you give some of these kids or even adults right now that are trying to make that transition? from yeah. their traditional job to something else. Like what where would you go to, for something like that? Honestly, it it it's a tough it it it's hard but it's also easy, right? I think if you are endemic to the space, if you have if you, you know, know if you know the the gaming and esports space because you've lived it, if you've been a player mm-hmm. or part of the community for so long, like you know the companies that are doing things. They they they're posting jobs all the time. I mean, there's literally esports job websites like Hitmarker totally. um and and other ones as well um where you can find actual job postings i mean you can go to riot or blizzard games but mm-hmm. i think the the outside of you know where to specifically go what i would say and and what i've talked to people who have asked me a lot of times mm-hmm. about as well is what is your actual skill or value that you're providing i mean a lot of people are like well i just want to work for uh, I'll just use the example. I want to work yeah. for Cloud9. It's like, okay, yeah. great. What do you want to do for them? Well, well I'll do anything. I, I just want to be in the company. <laughs> You're like, you need to be specific. And people right. don't realize, hey, listen, you need to be doing what you're passionate about and what yes. you're good at. It, otherwise, it's going to be a slow death. It's going to feel <laughs> like a slow death. <laughs> a- absolutely. because And I've been in that that same spot when I was younger. I would just be like, I just want to work for whatever company. Yeah, and like, I'll do whatever. I'll get coffee. I'll, yeah, do I'll do whatever. <laughs> and and I've I've been on the opposite side too, where for my podcast or other things I've been doing, people have DM'd me on Twitter and just said they've asked, Hey, what can I do for you? What I wanna I wanna help you guys with the podcast. What can I do? And mm-hmm. I asked them right back, Well, what can you do? I don't know mm-hmm. you, right? <laughs> like yeah. what, what yeah. do you do? Are you doing graphic design, social media? It's like I don't know what you're doing, what you do. <laughs> um and I, I think having a uh, an, a very specific idea or a mm-hmm. portfolio of some sort of work that you've done or that you're looking to do, even if it's just mm-hmm. stuff that you've done on your own, yep. examples of that and and being specific. Hey, uh, I know you're looking for a social media manager. Here's some mm-hmm. of the stuff I've done for you know, my buddy's band or their podcast or whatever. Anything like that that can help you be more specific. And uh, First, and, I, you, you know, must identify... <laughs> what it is that you're really wanting to do <laughs> yeah, and can do and have capabilities to do. That's yep. what's Absolutely. your passion for sure. Yep. And uh, so tell me what your projects you have going on right now. I mean, obviously we know that we're, you're with wisdom and I know that you do have a lot of amazing things also happening um, on the site. Uh, speak to that a little bit. Yeah. So I currently am running uh, outside of wisdom. I, I have a Legends of Runeterra podcast called Runeterrable Radio, mm-hmm. um, where we're talking about the Legends of Runeterra community. Um, that's mm-hmm. a riot card game for those uh, who are unaware of Legends of Runeterra. We've really kind of, I mean, with that podcast, we've been sort of cultivating the community a bit, but then also yeah. with wisdom. Um, you know, we're running weekly tournaments for that and, and really yeah, that's trying awesome. to build that community from the ground up because the game only came out, you know, six months ago. Yeah, I was going to say it's a and, new uh, thing. It, it is new and it's still, it's slowly growing. Um, yeah. But uh, on the wisdom side, we're working with Riot on a lot of different stuff. Um, so hopefully trying to build that out. Well, also back to that too. What is comparable to that, that game? For the, for oh, something the, like yeah. Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering would be... yeah somewhat close something to comparable to that yeah yeah, cool. yeah i mean hearthstone is the the biggest one that people immediately think of i mean the games uh-huh. themselves are very different but digital card game that, yeah you know they're no, under the awesome. same umbrella <laughs> yeah so you're you're saying something to uh with wisdom before i ever so rudely cut you off no no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i would just say you know wisdom as a whole is working with riot as a whole on a, a number of different uh projects so yeah. Um, you know, we're trying to build those communities sort of grassroots style, more yeah. um, you know, fighting game uh community esque where yeah. you know we've been running these community tournaments completely irrespective of Riot for I think actually today will be our nineteenth one for NA. So nineteen hey. weeks. Uh, well, maybe twenty weeks because I think we took a couple weeks off or something. But yeah, That's for so cool. 
uh, for many months now, we've just been running these irrespective of Riot. And, um, you know, with some of our other projects, uh, with Teamfight Tactics, we've been, um, you know, working directly with Riot to do some some projects. So That's really so cool. exciting stuff and hopefully uh, really being a driving force to to grow those communities. That's awesome. And, you know, um, just to kind of wrap things up a bit, I know I don't want to steal too much of your time because I, I steal a lot of that already. Um, and I have, I should say, you know, I always like to kind of talk about like some predictions. I know that you're actually a very forward thinker, like from what I've gathered from my conversations with you about you're really when you really are going with a lot of intentive thinking about what's to come for mm-hmm. things. So what are some predictions or what are some insightful things that you might be able to partake on all of us? Yeah. So I don't know. This isn't really a hot take or anything yeah. that's completely uh, um, original to you. Original, <laughs> original to me, but we can pretend yeah. like it is. It's fine. It's just <laughs> sure. me and you uh, here. It's it, original it, to me now. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Mobile. Mobile is big. Mobile is going to be king. It already is. If you look at some of the emerging markets, you look at Latin America, you look at India, China, Mm -hmm. um, and just Asia in general, mobile is absolutely king. It's starting to um, creep its way into North America as well a little bit. Um, I think uh, League of Legends Wild Rift, which is the League Mm -hmm. of Legends mobile um, Mm -hmm. It's not really a port. It's almost like a different game, but the, the version. Legends of Mobile, I think, will be gigantic, um, potentially even bigger than League of Legends proper. Um, yeah. Eventually, it's uh-huh. gonna uh-huh. it's gonna take a time for anything to overtake a giant like that. But yeah, accessibility is so huge. I mean, for I know, right? there's so many different um, demographics of folks, and just like I mean, yeah, because also too. I was going to say not everybody has a PC. It, right. It's an expensive hobby. Like people don't Absolutely. understand like the the gamer gamers who are in PC gamers. Mm-hmm. It is it's very expensive. And me mm-hmm. know, even being a single parent and having two gamer kids, I am well aware. My pocketbook <laughs> is very well aware of how yep. much it costs. So you're mm-hmm. right. Of the mobile version, another thing that is just easily accessible to everybody. At any walk of life. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in other countries. I mean, you just look, I mean, you yes. look at like just the YouTube numbers for, um, there's a game called Garena Freefall, which a lot of people in uh, North America probably never heard of or have only seen on headlines. It is an absolutely massive mobile, like PUBG style game. The yeah. YouTube numbers for that are, they dominate anything that you would even think of in terms of uh, uh, numbers for, uh, any game that's played yeah. in North America, really. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely massive because it's mobile, because yes. it's accessible to so yeah. many more, su- such a bigger percentage of the population can actually play the game and love to play it. Yeah, it's just so cool. And it just allows you to connect with a lot more people that you typically wouldn't either. And it gives people opportunity too that they they typically wouldn't have. And, and the skill sets, like people don't understand, like the when you're a gamer and you're into things, it teaches you a lot of things that you can actually take over into the business world, even with management and growing teams. Yep. And it's very salesy too. At the same time, when you think mm-hmm. about it, you being a sales manager would know. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely, especially like streaming and like your personal brand. I mean, you have yeah. to if you want to be successful, you really have to take that seriously and treat it like a business in a lot of ways. Yes, yeah. it's just you at your computer playing games, but like anyone who has streamed for in any capacity knows that it is so much more than that. No, totally, like, totally. So draining um, and like so many other things if you want it yeah. to be successful. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on today, John. Can you just give a, a little, uh, uh, your all of your, your Discord or your YouTube or your pop, anything, go ahead and give us all your handles. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I would say the best place to find me is going to be on Twitter. Um, I'm at the underscore Blevins on Twitter. That's B-L-E-V-I-N-S. Um, not <laughs> at Bearded Blevins, though I do look like I would be Bearded Blevins. That it's, is really that is Ninja's really actual b- brother, not me. <laughs> um, and then if you're you you know if you're on the... Uh, if you're looking to do anything cool in esports from a brand perspective, shoot me an email, Blevins at wisdom.gg. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you, John. And thank you to everyone listening to the Esports Future Eye Ezine podcast with Miss Chantel Boucher. Until next time, aloha, y'all.
Thanks for listening to the Esports Futurize Ezine Podcast. This podcast is part of the Esports Futurize Podcast Network and produced by Innovation Media Enterprises. Make sure you subscribe on your favorite podcast channel and leave us a review. Better, better